Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Serious Strategy Gamer, and we are returning to Hearts of Iron 4, playing as the Soviet Union. So last time around, we did conquer Japan and basically end World War II over here, and we have now entered the Cold War. And I want to talk a little bit about what happened in between, because I have played a little bit off-screen, because mostly I wanted to simulate sort of the ramp-up phase uh, to... Uh, the actual historical Cold War between 1945 and 1948, 1949 maybe. Um, so that period where there was some calm and tensions were increasing, I just wanted to get past that uh, and also have some time to develop our technology. So let's go through that and see where we stand today. So firstly, I've set up most of my armies to conquer more or less random parts of the Allies around over here in France. Switzerland has joined the Allies. There is an enormous amount of UK troops up over here. Uh, the Austrians actually joined uh, the Allies side as well. We've got the Italians down here. We've got Yugoslavia. Now I'm fairly confident that the Balkan countries would fall extremely quickly if we trigger off the war here. Uh, Gibraltar might take a while. Uh, we've got also a couple of tanks set up over here in Syria, of course, to take G uh, Suez so that uh, we can then go on and with North Africa and basically seal off the Mediterranean. And we've got a couple of uh, units set up here on the coastline to more or less defend that, and I think that should be a-okay. Oh, and you know what? I do think I should reconsider Norway because I don't want to lose against Norway a second time. Uh, so at some point we'll need to set up some forces over there. Yeah, and I think some of these will be extremely click quickly, like uh, Yugoslavia, is, or Czech sorry, Czechoslovakia down here, would fall extremely quickly, so you know what, we can siphon off a couple of troops over here. Let's pick these six divisions here, and let's set them up against Norway, and I think that should be fine at least, so that we don't lose Leningrad a second time, because that would be horrible. <laughs> right, uh, we've got a couple of further troops just shuttling around over there, that's fine. Uh, we've got a couple of troops down here in Asia, against Arid, against India, and... CM. And we've got a couple of troops here, uh, arrayed against Japan. So I think that should be great. We've also got, um, most of our troops have now got a uh, narrowing of basically 400 aircraft for each of these guys. So yeah, these air wings basically very seasoned fighters. Uh, these were our pretty much our last groups of fighters here, either the Yak-3 or the LAG-3. Uh, mostly it's still Lock 3, so, uh, or LAGG3. Uh, nevertheless, we also got ourselves a more modern Air Force. So I would consider these guys here to be the Army Air Force. These are the guys that are basically trying to fly with them. But we've also got fighters. We've got jet fighters now. And these are, of course, super modern and super useful. They are training up mostly uh, in the various air bases here in Russia, Western Germany, like uh, items like that. So overall, we have got, at this point, 17,000 fighters. Uh, and a lot of these should actually be jet fighters. I don't know whether we can see that up there, but you can see down here that a lot of these guys uh, that we are fielding, at the very least, are jet fighters. So I don't think it does tell us how many are jet fighters. No. All right, that's too bad. It should, should still be okay. We've got about 5,000 naval bombers, and I think that's actually way underestimated because I think we have a large number in reserve. Yes, you can see we've 13,000 naval bombers in reserves there, so we're going to field a couple of them. Uh, probably going to do that between episodes, uh, but yeah, that's that's about 20,000 aircraft in total uh, as naval bombers then. And we've got a couple of heavy fighters that's really not really heavy fighters. Vladivostok? Ah, I think these must be the scout planes. Yeah, it's funny that the game doesn't really recognize that. We've also got a couple of tactical bombers. Um, that's not really that many, 2,000 or so. We've also got a couple of jet tactical bombers. We're building them up, uh, but we're building them up relatively slowly. More importantly, we've got modern tanks. We've got the T-54A, which is a slightly modified version. We've got about 5,000 units of that, and we've got about 5,000 units of the SU-152. So these guys should be extremely great. Now, you might recognize that we're not using the modern self-propelled artillery brigade here, and that is because I want to finally change my guard template over here. So uh, let's have a look over here at the guard template, and we're going to remove one of our... Uh, infantry groups over here and we're going to replace that with an armored group which includes modern tanks and some modern self-propelled artillery now this 
is I think going to be a very great change. So that change means that our armor is going to increase very dramatically, our piercing is going to increase dramatically. Defense goes a little bit down, but breakthrough is increasing, soft attack is increasing by almost 100 points, as is hardness by 11 percentage points. So that's a very great change. Of course, supply usage is going to go up, so that's uh, unfortunate. Suppression eh, is fine. Organization goes down a little bit, but you know what? I think with the armor uh, upgrade here, I think that is going to be fantastic and fine. Now, we do just barely have enough modern tanks. We don't really have enough modern self-propelled artillery pieces, but you know what? I think that's fine. We're going to save this change over here, um, and that should be A-OK. -okay. Now, we also got still quite a large number um, of anti-tank guards here. Uh, we're probably going to shift that to the other template as time goes by. So let's actually look at production. We are currently devoting 90, uh, 90, 90 factories here for the production of modern tanks. Um, I don't think we should potentially shift a couple of these to modern self-propelled tanks. So let's dial down slightly here on these and so in, in favor of the self-propelled artillery pieces. We also got 120 Factories devoted to jet production. I guess we can shift these around to the modern self-propelled artillery pieces there. 32 naval bombers. That's still all right. We've got a lot of them in reserve. We've got a couple of scout planes that we are producing. 2,600. Uh, that should be more than enough, I think. So that should be fine. We should potentially set up a couple of scout planes for each of these armies here. Although I don't know whether they are going to use that very effectively. Infantry equipment. We've massively dialed down on that production. Um, and we are producing quite a couple of artillery pieces because I think we are slightly short on these. Yeah, we are. And anti-air, so, but they, that should basically be settled relatively quickly. Right, so that is the setup on the air and uh, ground front. Now on the naval front, we have got a new template, the Stalin. We've uh, renamed the older cruisers to, wait a minute, over here. I think we should see it. There, we've uh, renamed the older de design to the Lenin class, uh, including the upgrade of for the fire control system and the slightly better radar system. So they are decent craft. They are extremely fast at nearly 40 knots. And uh, they've got an attack plan here of 40 light attack, which is fantastic, and 60 torpedo, which I also consider very nice. Now we've got the Stalin class, which is pretty much just as fast, but still better light attack. A very good torpedo attack as well, so I think these guys are great. I love them. Um, I very, very, very much dig these craft. Uh, so that's nice. Um, you guys should actually be training up. But yeah, you can see we've actually got a large number of these ships. So we have got, right about now, we've got a lot of these crafts actually. So let's reconcile these guys here uh, just for, for a second to make sure that we're actually capturing how many light cruisers we've got over here. Um, and that should not actually take too long, I hope, unless they are in totally different theaters. Well, okay, probably we should check that over here. So we've got 110 light cruisers. Yeah, that's it. Uh, we're going to overwhelm the allies here, I think, quite uh, brutally. Now, most importantly, on the political front, I've been continuing to work on, you know, uh, on Mexico. And Mexico now has a communist majority. And the interesting bit here is they are going to have a vote in about a month time. So in about a month's time, uh, they might vote, and they might vote communists. So I'm going to be very interested to find out whether or not they will be joining us uh, in in the Comitant, or, or whether they can actually leave the Allies, because currently I think they are the Allies. If they could leave the Allies, that'd be fantastic, because we'd have a land border with the United States. So let's start the game over here, let's see what's going to happen in that regard, and see whether anything can be done. Right, I should buy more chromium, especially from our Turkish friends, I although I don't think that's going to be enough. Should buy more steel, I guess we can buy a little bit here from our allies. And I would still hope for this to be automated some day down the road. Okay, but we can buy a little bit less rubber. And I'm going to take a decision here to actually build up our steel production, which I think is going to be alright. Yeah, chromium we can't develop right now, but that's okay. Yeah, there we go, fine. Uh, by the way, in terms of construction, we are building up a couple of nuclear uh, energy reactors over here, so that's fantastic. Someone falling ill, that's okay. And we've been building up 
quite a bit of our infrastructure. You can see we've done basically a project here uh, to build up level 100 infrastructure all the way and we've actually done that for to a very large extent in a lot of these provinces already. So I think that's going to be great. Communism is going to live extremely, extremely well over here. And you can see in terms of factories, we've got now over 1,300 factories here. That's, I think, much, much more than the Americans probably have. Yeah, they've got about 500. So we are numbering them two to one. And I think that's mostly in terms of, well, military factories, it's nearly two to one. Civilian factories, it's more like three to one. Uh, and naval dockyards, it's all kind of two to three to one. So yeah, massive advantage there over the Americans. Uh, British potentially do have a little bit else. They have a lot of military factories, I have to admit that. But yeah, let's see whether we can overwhelm them in due time. And let's see what's going to happen here in July. Where are you actually based? You're based down here. Why do you consider your job as active? I don't get that because it didn't show that over here. Well, that's okay though. Yeah, we do have some, some experience there. I think I should actually train up a couple of Marines. Now, these guys are really not that great because um, their setup is, is looking a little bit weird. Um, they're at it. You, you can see it's basically just a very weird design there. Uh, but over time we will be gaining some army experience and then we can change that design. But it's better to have them trained up before that, I think. Right, more chromium missing. Okay, let's ask South Africa here for, for a second. They might be delivering some to us as well. Right, and that should be fine. Other things in terms of research, we are working on the nuclear bomb. We are working on some AA upgrades and logistic companies so that we are reducing the impact there of the um, switch to modern self-propelled artillery pieces. Modern tanks are still fine. By the way, our tanks, of course, are changed so that they have at least one modern tank division uh, or one modern tank brigade in there, uh, which is mostly pushing up the armor and piercing. Curiously enough, I think most of the time it just doesn't change that much if you're bringing in another guy here. So you can see the armor and piercings just really is not that... None of these things here are that different actually. So honestly, I don't think this is this is that worthwhile. Um, we've done the same here with the light tanks, which is is a weird division by now. Um, and I suppose what we could do is think about at least... Ah oh, yeah, but we don't have the army experience, so that's fine. Yeah, it's okay. Right, improved anti-air upgrade, that's okay. Uh, we're gonna change here to the next one, basically so that we get better uh, templates there. How are we looking in terms of the Navy? Yeah, most of our, and you can see there are another 20 light cruisers that we just hadn't had, didn't have before. So yeah, all of you guys here can train up at the same time. Yeah, so we've got 40 light cruisers that are training up to do better proficiency now. And we've got this group of 88 light cruisers. So I think this is pretty fantastic. And a little bit ridiculous, actually. So um, let's bring them down to sort of a more manageable size of 11 light cruisers each. And we now have eight groups in total. So yeah, there we go. Um, I think that's that's kind of kind of kind of funny, right? Okay. Um, and honestly, I think you guys you could actually come um, over here towards the English Channel because I would like. Um, so sort of most of you to, to be actually be operating that theater. Um, and you know what, let's, can I select you and sort of deselect all of these things? Yeah, that'd be fantastic. And you know what, you can deselect that as well. Who's still operating here? Oh no, that was just, I did mark these sea zones here as not safe because of Japan at some point in the past. So yeah, that should be okay, right. Okay, you guys are then all going sort of to Normandy or some other place. Holding position? No, 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 no. Do come over here. I think that's going to be all right. And you, you're holding position as well. Let's go over there. I think that's fine. Right, okay. July is rolling around. And I think at some point, we should hear a little bit about the situation in Mexico. So how are things over here? Okay, let's get back to political view. PI, democratic. Next. How can you still be democratic? That's a massive communist win over here. Did that at least hit your stability? Stability is at 51. Now at what point could we conduct could we conduct 
some operations over here. So, okay, let's get back to the opera operative maps. We've um, captured someone over here. Now, we could orchestrate a coup if it's at less than 50% stability, but only at peace, less than 50% stability. It's not considered a may. I don't think it's considered a may. Okay, so let's try to bring down its stability. Is that propaganda? Yes, okay. Let's try to bring that down. Um, you guys are fine. We have infiltrated the army actually already. So that is fine as well. You are also doing some other things. So okay, let's let's also try to decrease the stability with you. And I think that might be relatively effective. So overall, yeah, overall we are reducing the stability by about zero, zero point something per day. So I think it should decrease a little bit over here over time. And that might be enough. Oh, it's actually increased now. Well, let's keep an eye on that as well. And we might deploy some units there. Uh, but I do think we are going to bring, bring up the logistic company here as well. So that's fine. Um, and who can be deployed? Is that you guys? Yeah, it's probably you guys. Uh, so let's set the location at somewhere over here. And then you should be deployed there. Or is it? No, it's not you. Okay, there we go. Gone to. And because of the weird map overlay, you need to be reassigned to some of the groups there. So yeah, you are currently doing some defensive stuff over on the Asian coast. So you, yeah, I just want to reinforce you there. And that's fine. Um, and you can train up there for a second. Right. Okay, fantastic. How are things now? Okay, down to 51% now again. So that's interesting to see that sort of sh change going this way and that way. Foreign propaganda is a weekly effect of minus four. Okay, that should not take long. That should only take about two weeks here. Um, that being said, we have some free dockyards. I'm going to use them to build more styling class like cruisers. Because why not? We have way too few of these already. There's another one. Let's uh, push it into there so that you have a little bit more experience there. And you know what, you guys, I think you're all fine. Um, let's have you in another group. You guys can go back to um, sort of over here. And then what I am going to do is I'm going to define here a new template and that includes... Ah, damn it. Okay, so let's change that for a second here so that we have a different template for you. So you get this gun here and that's fine. And that will allow us then to change the template over here um, to the new standard 20. And we're going to call that the CL fleet. So that should be okay. And uh, you are also going to go for the... Do I want to save that? CL fleet. 20. There we go. Save. Did save it. Okay. You guys, can I now select that? Yes, I can. Okay, there we go. Fantastic. So you should all sort of grab that over time. And basically these things should be allocated to you. And I think that's going to work out fantastically fine. Nice. I like it. Good. Yeah, so we've got basically 100. No, wait a minute. That's 8. I think we'll have about 200 ships allocated into this fleet over here over time. And that is, that is a fantastic, fantastic fleet, I think. So yeah, let's let's see how that is going to work. And we've just researched something and I've completely forgot about what I think advanced rockets here. Yeah, so let's do that. And that does remind, we can, we can probably start building some rocket sites, especially here in France uh, and maybe in Spain. And that should give us some abilities to strike uh, way into into the American heartlands and stuff like that. So that I think should be okay. Right, fantastic. So how are we looking in Mexico then? Let's take a look at the operative maps over here. Okay, yeah, you are now below 50% stability. So at this point we can still not co uh, 
start a coup. It is AI controlled. It is at peace. But it m probably... It's not considered a mayor. It has more than 20% support for the PCM. It must have, right? Yeah. It has more than 50% support. So why can I not conduct a coup here? Help me out, guys. So, I don't quite get that. As I understand it, Mexico would not be considered a mayor. So, one of the following must be true. All of the following. It's not a mayor. It's at peace. It has less than 70% stability. I think that's all true. You're not at war against anyone, are you? You're in the Allies. This is weird. This I don't understand. We have 92% chance over there. Okay, let's get you back towards the UK. You need to build up some base over there. And you, my friend here, will need to start building some base in the United States as well. Because we do have three people here and I don't get that. Okay, we could prepare the collaboration government. I don't think we need that for the coup. Yeah, we, I mean, we're not trying to occupy them. I'm merely trying to orchestrate a coup. I mean, we can try to push it down to below 35% stability, and at that point, at the very least, it should work out. Okay, even if that is not going to work out, it would be fantastic if we could strike at the Americans directly. But even if it's not going to work out, we are going to strike here by, um, I think, yeah, but, but uh, by early 1947, I think. So that should be okay. One of you is not confident at winning, and that's you. Well, I understand that, because you've got an enormous amount of troops there arrayed against you. You guys are guarding the east there, that's okay. Yeah, and we are in terms of logistics, we're a little bit shy in artillery, we are still a little bit shy only in modern artillery pieces. Um, so that's okay. We have a lot of tanks. Well, I'm guessing we can change one one of you here to modern tanks. We do have the capabilities, so let's change that out. Should give us a little bit more stuff. Apparently you're not even losing a lot of know-how there. So that's okay. We're a little bit low on supplies here. That's unfortunate. How much attrition are you suffering due to that? Quite a bit actually, so what can we do to save on that? Okay, we need to prioritize a little bit the construction of this city down here. Yeah, let's prioritize to roll and Veneto. And maybe Upper Austria as well. I mean, you're producing that all of that already. You're actually also producing these things. Um, we should also a little bit build up the air bases here, I think. Let's build some in Brittany. I imagine we're going to be fighting over there quite a bit. You know what, down there as well. How are our air bases in Asia looking? Well, not that great, actually. So let's build them up down there in that area. Are we... We do have some good radar coverage pretty much all around. So yeah, I like that. We're covering most of the United Kingdom there actually, so that's good. Right. You guys are still training up, but that shouldn't take too long. We are researching the Marines. We do have a bit of command power, we do have a bit of naval experience. You guys training up mostly. Let's make sure to fix the ships that need fixing. And you'll be reassigned to someone over there. And yeah, upgrade, that's nice. Let's research the latest model. It's quick, gonna be a quick research. So why are you not allocated? Yeah, you are. Okay, fine. Fantastic. 
You guys are mostly fine. I think we don't need to be too concerned about mixing the Lenin and Stalin classes. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, in history, of course, that would have been quite different. How are we looking in terms of intelligence now here? So what's your stability? 46% and I'm guessing I can still not send any any coup. You have a pretty good network over there as well. That's all America. Yeah, I just don't understand that. Maybe I'll have to read it up on the internet. I don't think we need the cipher. I don't think we need a preparation of, of any government, so... That's, that's curious. We do have some information here about the United Kingdom and the United States. So let's briefly look at that, especially their air forces. Uh, we don't really know a lot, but we do know that they have about 25,000 or... Let's let's call that 20,000 aircraft. It's not the worst. And you guys have about 40,000 aircraft. Well, that's a little bit more substantial. Um, now again, how many aircraft have we got? We have got, yeah, well, let's actually look at the aircraft. And um, we've got about 20,000 fighters. Plus the stuff that we have in reserves. But at some point it just becomes too unwieldy. Yeah, so that's about another 7,000. I think we're going to be all right. We're going to be all right, yeah. But it will take some time. Have you guys, yeah, you've got us sort of all trained up, so that's nice to see. Um, and we are going to establish quite a couple of new air wings over here, especially for naval bombers. I think they're going to be a little bit larger. And they're going to be operating up over here as well, so that I think should be A-OK. -okay. Right. Good. That being said, thank you very much for watching, guys. I think next time around we will be kicking in. Uh, the we, we, we will be starting World War Three here um, and see what's going to happen once we do so. So, yeah. Very excited about that. Let's see. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope to see you around next time. Bye-bye.